Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of cloud computing. Today, my guest is from OpsCode. We have the CEO, Mitch Hill, on the show today. So, Mitch, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rich. Nice to be here. Well, thanks for coming on. Um, I understand you guys got a a momentum release here, and we've got uh, the Chef Conference coming up. So I brought your slides up. Why don't we start with that? Sure. Uh, We have a number of things to talk about today. I actually want to start to talk a little bit about Ops Code and Chef. Um, Our news today is that we're announcing a uh, a Series C funding round of $9.5 million. But I wanted to talk a bit about uh, Chef in the marketplace, commercial Chef. We have two versions of commercial Chef. We have a hosted version. We have an enterprise version called uh, Private Chef. And uh, also, we'll sort of close out uh, with announcing our, our uh, Chef Conference for 2012. It's our very first user conference. We're very excited about it. Uh, <clears throat> a little bit of background on us here at OpsCode and what, what we're seeing in the marketplace and why we exist. Uh, the, the great thing about our industry is, is that the, uh, the demand for compute storage and, and network resource resources never goes down. It just gets bigger and bigger every year. And uh, we're seeing in the world today because of mass consumerization and the fact that just about everybody in the world is con- consuming compute powered on a cell phone, desktop, uh, laptop, tablet, you name it, uh, that the need for uh, more complex and larger computing infrastructure continues to just explode. And the core technology of virtualization is enabling a lot of that, but uh, in this cycle, it's, it's, it's being uh, created through cloud computing. And the other factors that are making the world interesting is, is that op- the open source stacks have sort of exploded, and the world that we see at least, you know, most companies are using open source stacks to build their uh, most of their business systems, and those are complex. And then the other thing is that companies are also trying to push more change associated with their core computing environments even faster. So uh, there's a lot going on out there. I'm going to switch to the next slide that uh, is uh, resulting in very, uh, very complex computing environments. So I you know, haven't been in the industry for a while. I actually remember back in the days when people worked on mainframes, and that was the primary compute environment. Uh, the cycle that started with virtualization, uh, I guess a bit over 10 years ago, now has really started to explode as we move into the cloud world. So we work with lots of companies that have that manage thousands of servers. I would say that's just common. Even for people that are not in the media or the web business, they manage thousands of servers. We work with companies that manage tens of thousands of servers and even hundreds of thousands of servers. So there's this, this scale uh, factor that has just taken off. And then you add, you add the complexity of the software stacks that we're deploying today. A lot of that's because of open source. Very few companies use integrated stacks anymore. And we've had a combinatorial step change in uh, the complexity of compute environments that people need to, to manage. And there simply are not the skills in the marketplace to manage those environments. Uh, you don't. You don't go to school to become an infrastructure, an infrastructure engineer. There's no classes for it. Most of the people that are good at it have learned in a, some kind of apprentice model. Uh, they may be developers that got good at infrastructure or system admins that uh, got, were very good at managing scale and complexity. But uh, the, the rate of change here is resulting in this huge gap in the market. And if you can move to the next slide, Rich. <clears throat> and... Uh, this, the, the only solution to, to this problem is automation uh, and uh, automation that allows you to define how you want to build things, things being primarily software stacks. So how, how do you, what kind of software do you want to implement? How do you want to configure it? And, uh, and, and then how frequently do you want to introduce change into that environment? And that's what Chef does. That's what OpsCode does. And Chef really becomes a force multiplier for any enterprise that uh, is experiencing this growth and complexity and scale. In our, and in our experience, that's just about everybody in the market today. Uh, so why so, and why automate? It's the, the very first thing is to manage that that uh, that complexity. 
uh, so that you can define it once and then build it multiple times or iterate off of that definition. And then also uh, uh, the next point is, is that uh, th so that you can change continuously. Uh, we work with a lot of companies that are introducing change into their uh, computing environment on a on a minute by minute basis, as opposed to a monthly or a uh, or a, a weekly basis, I think that's becoming much more much much more common, and it's because the business demands it. Uh, the the business that people are are in does not allow them to wait for a week or a month to introduce change, and and uh, when they use our tools to do that, they increase their productivity, and so fewer outages uh, and. And more importantly, when you have to make change at scale, you, you just make simple configuration changes once and then they get propagated out to these large complex environments. So, so that's what OpsCode is all about. We're about infrastructure automation. Uh, we're helping uh, thousands of uh, companies around the world, individuals and companies around the world uh, automate infrastructure. And uh, we have a large and vibrant open source community. Chef is an open source project. Uh, tens of thousands of people that are, that are uh, sort of with us out there in the marketplace uh, uh, using Chef and helping us improve Chef every day. Uh, a, a little bit of uh, background on Chef as a tool. I mean, Chef, uh, at its core level, Chef is a is a model for allowing reuse in the area of, uh, of defining and then building infrastructure. And the way that we do that is through these things called recipes that allow you to abstract some of the complexities and configuration details of the environment away from each other. And those recipes get aggregated into cookbooks. Uh, and cookbooks stand up complete uh, uh, stacks of infrastructure. If you go to our website at community.opscode.com, you can see cookbooks for things like MySQL, setting up Java stacks, uh, operations environments like Nagios. Uh, there's really, there's over 400 cookbooks on our site today. They're there for just about anything. And by the way, including a lot of the Windows stuff, Windows Server, uh, SQL, IIS, those kinds of things. And once you define something in a cookbook, it's very easy to uh, build it again. And a, a common scenario using Chef is that uh, instead of introducing an incremental changes, we have companies that basically you know, tear down and then rebuild infrastructure um, with a, stim a simple push of the button. And the, uh, I think for, for, th for this audience, uh, a great use case that we see out there for Chef is uh, companies that want to spin up uh, thousands of, of cores uh, to, to do a computing task and when they're finished they basically tear them back down. Um, we, have a, we have a company we work with out there you may have heard of called Cycle Computing. They work primarily in the uh, biotech world, uh, so, so hardcore scientific work, workloads. Uh, the folks at Cycle Computing have, uh, have used chef recipes and cookbooks to stand up uh, thousands of Linux servers have those servers run for, I think, in this specific case here, perhaps a weekend. And then when they're done, they use cookbooks to tear them all back down. And, uh, and uh, they have uh, effectively taken on very high-end, uh, high-performance computing tasks for uh, what I would say is pennies on the dollars compared to what you, you, you used to have to spend. And it's, again, interesting use case, but uh, a lot of our customers do this with sort of more mundane workloads. It doesn't have to be HPC, but it just, uh, the, the, uh, the, the difference between being able to use recipes and cookbooks to do this is, is uh, really significant in terms of productivity. On to the next slide, and this is back to Chef, the movement. It's this open source community that we have out there, and we love these folks. Um, they love us. And they love the tool. Um, most people um, that are architects, developers, or engineers that start using Chef, once they get comfortable with it, they never stop using it. Um, uh, we, these are tweets that we've collected. If you go to our website, we actually have hundreds of these things. They sort of show up uh, every day as people start to use the tool. Uh, I love the bottom one, which is, I will die if I can't use Opscode Chef, period. Um, that's sort of the, the ultimate customer testimonial. But, uh, but again, as I, as I uh, get a chance to talk to our community members and people around the world, the, the people that use the tool absolutely love it. And once they start using it, they don't stop. We've 
we've seen a, a lot of market momentum. And I guess if you went back perhaps 15 months, uh, people would have thought of us as being the sort of open source guys. Um, and now we are becoming the enterprise guys when it comes to infrastructure automation. And we, we, we see, uh, since we introduced Private Chef back in Q4 of last year, we see large companies like Ancestry.com, you know, large public web property, public company that's a web property. Uh, Land Airlines is a, the largest airline in South America, EA, um, and uh, an e-commerce uh, site that's well-known out there these days is Stella and Dot. They're all chef users of various shapes and sizes, ranging from small web startups all the way to large, more traditional air, uh, uh, companies like, uh, like an airline. And in the, at the same time, the open source community has continued to grow very rapidly. We now have over 800,000 chef downloads. That's about 10x of what it was when we started measuring it um, uh, about 18 months ago. And uh, the number of people in the uh, chef community actually self-identify. They sign up to be on our user list. Um, that's above 13,000 people today. It's roughly doubled in the last year. And contributors to Chef, and you contribute either by contributing cookbooks and recipes or by tr contributing code, um, are over 500 individuals, over 100 companies. And again, that's roughly doubled in the last 12 months. And all those numbers are accelerating. We're announcing uh, Chef Conf 2012 today. It's our first user conference. Uh, we're very excited about it. It'll be in San Francisco on May 15th through the 17th. It's going to be mostly about our customers sharing their experiences with each other um, as opposed to us telling them about us. Uh, so you can see some of the keynotes already on here from companies like Fidelity Investments, Ancestry.com, HP. This is the, uh, the cloud division of HP. I also mentioned uh, from an HPC perspective that Jason Stowe, who runs Cycle Computing, will, will be speaking as well. We have some great sponsors, companies like HP, VMware, Citrix. So. Um, I'm hoping anybody listening to the podcast will uh, will consider coming in uh, and spending some time with us at ChefConf. Uh, we included this uh, for the for the podcast. There's a discount code for Inside HPC readers. If you're interested uh, and you go to the Chef the ChefConf site and sign up, you can get a 10% discount by entering this code. So we hope to see you in San Francisco. Okay, Rich, I think that's sort of my prepared uh, remarks. I don't know if you might have any questions for me. Well, certainly, and thanks for that for that discount for the Inside HBC readers, Mitch. Uh, a question about your active developers, you know, with, with 500 already. I mean, I know open source projects that have maybe two or three, and they consider that almost critical mass. Uh, do you see that continuing to grow at, at the rate it is right now? I, I think so, and the the reason is is that the the problem that we're trying to solve um, is somewhat never ending, and I would say that the uh, the, the cycle we've been on is is that those early adopter uh, guys that were probably contributing to Chef two years ago were really trying to help us solve a lot of the core problems uh, about how Chef works. A lot of the contributions now are about how to solve uh, uh, edge cases of how to build infrastructure with Chef. So we have a lot, a lot of the core, we have recipes and cookbooks for a lot of what I'd call core cases. I need to stand up a database, a web server. I need to stand up a management environment. Uh, but as people get figure that stuff out, they, sort of, they start floating out toward trying to solve problems at the edge. I think the HPC example is probably a good one. Um, and then also a lot more around proprietary software. So it's interesting that you can use Chef to build recipes and cookbooks for standing up proprietary software. Uh, so we're, we have a lot of people that are contributing things around Windows now, Solaris, AIX, and also commercial packages like Splunk. Um, so, you know, it's a multi-purpose tool. And as you solve the, the core problems and people start to drift out toward the edge. Uh, so I, I think it will. And it is. It's impressive. It's, 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 it's a big number. And we, uh, we're impressed by the amount of uh, sharing that we see around the community. So, Mitch, one of my other publications is Inside Big Data, and people mm -hmm. keep telling me about the difficulty of configuring Hadoop um, yeah. for these analytics problems. Does Chef have a role to play there? It does, and there, there are actually Hadoop uh, recipes and cookbooks on the site today. Uh, so, 
we and I think we've had Hadoop cookbooks for a while. So yeah, as as well as uh, cookbooks for some of the specific uh, versions of Hadoop. So yeah, absolutely. And so Mitch, I guess you know you've been at uh, OpsCode for a while, but I'm I'm curious, what attracted you to the company? Uh, it's it's a great question. I uh, I was the CEO of a company called Avanade before this. Avanade is a joint venture between Accenture and Microsoft, and uh, had about over ten thousand engineers and developers working for me. And what we did for a living was stand up infrastructure and build complex applications for primarily large enterprises. Uh, I started that company in 2000 and ran it for nine years, and it became a big company. So I decided to, to let the next guy run it for a while. And as I started looking around for the for the the next thing, what I saw in Chef is a model for reuse that works. And I've been in computing for over 30 years now. We've talked about that a lot <laughs> in a lot of different generations of computing. But frankly, there there really hasn't been any great tools for it. So when I dug into Chef. Uh, and saw the potential uh, that got me really excited, and uh, so I I chose Chef as my next startup. And kind of a wrap up question here of you know your value proposition is all around the need for automation. Do you just see that need increasing over time? I do, and it, it again because of I I don't think the the uh, the environments are going to get simpler. I think the amount of I think the acceleration of change, uh, the increase in scale, and the increase in the number of piece parts means that this is uh, you know this is a this is a trend line that gets steeper, uh, not shallower. So uh, I don't I don't see it going away. It's interesting in, in in computing the way it seems to go is we make things more simple for the user uh, in every generation. You know, pick up an iPhone or an iPad or something like that. On the one hand, but on the back end, when you think about the complexity that needs to come together to get those things to work, complexity continues to increase. So, uh, so yeah, I don't see this. I see this problem continuing to grow. Well, terrific. Well, Mitch Hill, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show today. All right, Rich. Thanks so much for your time. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of cloud computing. <laughs>